All right. So what we're doing is is what we're doing, Sophia. You getting ready to explain some words to me. All right. So I'm gonna explain, you know, real quick how the story of Adam and Eve is not about the first human beings on the planet. It's about the first slaves on the planet. Okay. And so really, what I'm saying is, you gotta look in the language and really 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 study the devils in the details okay so all right so we're going to just start here since we're here in genesis 2 of the book we call the book of life one of the greatest books on the planet right so now you look at it says god formed right he formed man of the dust not from the dust of the dust keep that in mind now form means the visible shape or configuration of something right the form right to shape configuration means to reconfigure right man of the dust not out of the dust you see this there of the dust right of the ground all right and then it gives us another clue the nostrils right so when we look at uh let's see what should we do where where did, was that at all right no who was that at i just seen this where was that at, Sophia? Where was that at? Oh, here it is, the Sphinx. All right, so when we look at the Sphinx, we see dust. <laughs> and who are these people? People who lived among these men of the dust, right? Now, they built in the dust. And you look, the man of the dust, right? If you look, his nose is blown off. Right. His nostril, see the symbol? The nostril symbolizes the necroid because of his adapt adaptation to the planet Earth and in this region. You got to have nostrils. You can bring in the oxygen. Right. And then also the serpent that was at the center of his head. You got to notice that that's being blown off, too, because the serpent represented power and authority. Right. Uh, his rulership. Right. So look at it. Boom, boom. Who blew this off and why? So it's all a part of the cover up. That was my people. All right. So you you know, see though these are my people. You see. So making the face good. Yeah, so the form is, you know, saying they're always going to use the word multiple times, right? Because of the visible shape configuration. They're going to use the word multiple times to always to confirm that it is not a coincidence. The man who he had form, he put there he put the the man where eastward right where in the garden right a garden is um a specific place where that you grow crops like a plantation right if you look up the word garden it has the same definition as a piece of ground near often near a house used for growing flowers fruits vegetables like he said that confirmed because it says uh god made every tree that is pleasant to the sight like flowers and good for food like vegetables all right so um it says the life the tree of life was in there and um knowledge was what was actually being uh kept away from them now he's also giving you a clue that they're traveling right and then now they're talking about the, the a river went out of eden and parted into four river heads and the name of the verse is Pashan. And it skirts through the land of Havila, where there is gold. And the gold of that land is good. This is the second chapter in the first book of the Bible, Genesis. And the first, the, what, the, the, what the key thing on their mind is there is gold. And the gold of that land is good. We're not talking about the first human beings on the planet, right? Bedillium and onyx stone are there, right? So somebody formed the man is, is telling you also... What they're noticing there is gold, bedillium, onyx stone. If it was God, he put it there. He This wouldn't be a discovery. You know what I'm saying? The name of the second river is Gehun. It is the one which goes out around the whole land of Cush. Well, who's Cush? Cush is the southern part of ancient Nubia. First mentioned in the Egyptian records of the Middle Kingdom in the Bible is the country of the descendants of Cush. We're talking about people, Ethiopian people, Yibouti, people in Djibouti, people in Somalia, people in the region, what we now, we uh, in this area of the world, the southern, from the Sudan, Eritrea, Djibouti, Ethiopia, Ethiopia, Somalia, South, South Sudan, and North 
will be starting up in this region. This is this is Mizraim in the Hebrew, Aramaic uh, languages, and the Greeks named it Egypt. The Africans called it Kemet, and uh, this would be also southern southern Nubia. All right. So um, now, if we go back, we noticed we was talking about how it says God formed man, right? Configured as opposed to created. Now let's drive it home, right? C created, right? Created, bringing into existence. They used it here. So we know that they could have used it there if they wanted to. Genesis 1, 27, guess what it'll say? So God created man. In the first chapter, it uses created. Because man is being brought into existence, right? In his own image, in the image of God, he created him. Use the created again. Male and female, he created them. So both male and female were brought into existence, right? Brought into existence in Genesis 1.27. And he used the word created how many times? One, two, three, in the one sentence. One sentence, right? All right? Now, you got to also, also know that it says, God said, let us. So God has allegiance, right? Right? Make man in our image. You can't forget this, right? But let's, we're proving that this is not the first man and woman, but the first slaves. So we just brought home that it was created, was using used uh, three times in one sentence in reference to uh um the formation of man in Genesis 127 right God created man right he created him male and female and he created them they made sure that they use created three times people say oh that's a coincidence right that was by accident no 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 Genesis 5 when he talks about the family of Adam right it's talking about the book of the genealogy of Adam. That's what we're actually talking about. This is the book of the genealogy of Adam. And then it says, in the day that God created man, he created him in the likeness of God. He created them, male and female, right? <laughs> created being used and blessed them and called them mankind in the day they were created. <laughs> they was created as opposed to to formed because the forming of man is to make him the tiller of the ground so bring that home prove all things how do you prove that well it says he was formed not created in this passage why was he formed because there was no man to till the ground that's a prop right the work in the field right so that's what he Put the man, right? He had formed, right? <laughs> in the garden, right? That he had planted. The landlord, right? Lord just means a master. Master, someone having authority. Because he had the, the knowledge of good and evil, you can call him God. That's what the serpent had told you. If you got the knowledge, knowledge make you like God. All right? So it says, again, just in case you uh, was uh, confused, again, it says the Lord, right? Didn't say, oh yeah, this is. All right, so took man and put him in the garden of Eden. Why? To tend and keep it, to confirm that that's why this man was was uh, configured, right? Now, it says it's good, not, not good a man, he be alone. So I will make him what? A helper. What kind of helper? Comparable to him. See what I'm saying? Comparable, which simply means of the likeness similar see of a personal thing able to be likened right means of the same race pretty much you know a prox aiken equivalent all right so out of the god lord uh the lord god formed every beast now of the field so this is talking about the domestication from sheep from the wild mufflin right we look at the wild mufflin, mufflin, mufflun, right? Look at the wild mufflin. Listen, uh, we were supposed to look it up. All right. So, so sheep is from the search for wild my mufflin. Yeah, the wild brother. <laughs> look at him. <laughs> look at him, made from the earth. 
You got the skin protecting from the sun. You got the head protecting from the adversities of the wild, right? The mufloon, right, is a subspecies group of the wild sheep, right? We let's go back to the domesticated of the sheep. Didn't we just come from there? Here, let's go. Where, where was it at? The sheep, the sheep, the sheep. Where are we now? Domesticated okay. sheep. The history of domesticated sheep goes back between 11,000 and 9,000 BC and the domestication of the wild mouflin in ancient Mesopotamia. That's where Abraham is representative of. He's coming out of Mesopotamia, which is this area right here, right? That's why they're going to say they got evidence of it in Iran. All right, so sheep are among the first animals to have been domesticated by humans, and there's evidence of the sheep farming in Iran statuary dating to that time period. So when you become domesticated... Not right now! When you become domesticated, you lose your defenses? Yes. Yes, absolutely. They remove it. They genetically remove the, your defenses. Mm -hmm. That's part of the blood. The, the blood worship, under, I mean, Understand understanding that. the deep understanding of blood but it's all through the female right and using the genetics so they're using the female the black woman genetics so that's to answer the question right you know people were saying uh man i thought i had it there but i guess it was uh not all right so but the female the black woman is how you actually put your seed and that's through the story the example of abram he couldn't have a son with uh well he didn't have a child with uh, Sarah for a long time. Sarah didn't think she was gonna have a child, right? She was in her 80s, right? So she gave him his her uh, her say her bond servant, right? Uh, to have the a child. Woman. Yeah, the Egyptian. That's a black woman. We say in Egypt, where's Egypt? Egypt was right here. So Abraham's first Abram, not Abraham. Abram's first child is from a mother from Egypt. This is an African woman. This is a black woman. Right. So he migrates from here. He comes down here. He settles here. He doesn't have no children. So he has a child by a woman from Egypt. Right. So the secret is, is that when Sarah did have her child, look, Syria, <laughs> when Sarah had her child. Right. Uh, you know, when she did have her child, she had Ishmael pushed back down. Right. He was sent out, cast out all of that stuff. I mean, that's Genesis. What Genesis uh, 20. Let's go to Genesis. Lot's captive. What is that? Hagar and Ishmael, right? So if you go back, a Ishmael with Hagar. He was 86 old when Hagar bore Ishmael, the Egyptian woman. They're gonna let you know he's Egyptian. All throughout it. Hagar, the Egyptian maidservant. They call her a maidservant here. Keep that in mind. <laughs> Egyptian, African, maidservant to who? Abram, who? Where is he from? Well, you got to go to, we'll come right back to that. You got to go to Genesis 34. I hope I did Genesis. Is it 34? I think it says. No, that's the Dina incident. Where is it? That's, I don't know that off lip right now. So I'm going to go back to where we was at. 16, right? All right, so he's from Mesopotamia. I can prove that in a few minutes. But all right, so um, he proved that. And the only way you really know that is he sent his slave up to find Isaac of wife. And that's how you know that, you know, they went to Mesopotamia. And that's why everybody identifies them. All right, so anyway, um, she bec he has a child with her. I mean, okay. So at the end of the day, he ended up having Isaac. Once Isaac is born, the son of promise. All right. Let's see here. Isaac is born. He's a Isaac. All right. So once Isaac born, Ishmael's got to go. All right. So um, they were toiled about that. God was talking to Hagar. I'm just going to go straight to it because I don't want to bore you. All right. But anyway, so it says he took a wife for him from the land of Egypt. All right. So that's basically what I'm trying to tell you is that ultimately the lad, the, the Abram had a child with Hagar, who was an African woman. Right. And then they were sent back out. And then he had a uh, then she found 
her son an Egyptian woman. And that was the key thing because that was they ended it with, with that, right? That was the last sentence. And now we're going into the covenant, right? Which is they're going to give the land of Canaan to Abraham. You see, he was Abram here. Oh, is it, when did he become Abraham? Because he was just Abram. But he end up, he comes Ham because he gets Ham's land. Just the, the lands of the Ham, the sons of Ham, who we already went through, right? Ham, look up Ham. Ham is the biblical son of Noah, right? The traditional ancestor of the Hamites. And the Hamites are Cush, Mizraim, um, Put, and Canaan, right? Which are which we went we went over and we'll go over here once we we uh, we wrap this up here. All right, so let's just go there now. So that is going to be Genesis ten, where it explains the sons of Ham. All right, which Cush, Mizraim, Put, and Canaan. Cush being southern Kemet, which we just went through. Some uh, it's the southern part of Nubia, first mentioned in Egypt, re Egyptian records of the Middle Kingdoms in the Bible. It is the country of the descendants of Cush. So we talk about the descendants of Cush, of the people of the kingdom, which is now we know is ancient Nubia. But they changed all these languages up to confuse you. All right. Uh, Mizraim is Egypt. All right. You look it up. By definition, Mizraim is the Hebrew and Aramaic name for the land of Egypt. Right. With the dual suffix of axiom, perhaps referring to the two Egypts, Upper Egypt and Lower Egypt. All right, which we know by looking at the map, it's been flipped up upside down. Lower Egypt is the part that is right here in the north, and Upper Egypt is the part that we would say now in the south because of the way the Nile flows, um, upper, lower. So the um, uh, the that's the African concept, and the, the African concept, like I said, has been completely flipped upside down. But we looked at Egypt, we found we seen Nubia, right? Egypt, put is a little bit harder because of the word put meet has so many different meanings. So they don't really I haven't really seen um uh exactly where the put place is, but you can Google put, which we can do real quick. Hold on, let's let's do it. Let's look up search for put. And we're gonna have to put the uh ancient put. And we'll, once we do that, then you'll get Put is the third son of Ham in the Bible table of generations. It is also in the Bible for the people or nation said to be the descendants of him. All right. Usually placed in the ancient in ancient Libya, but connections are sometimes proposed. But if we just go to the images, you'll see maps, right, where you see Put, Mizraim, Cush. And if you could see this part they would have Canaan at the top there. But it, this map is obviously cut off. So anyway, we proved all of that, that we are talking about specific African nations of people. And then you even get even more clear that when you got Sheba here, the queen of Sheba, that's Ethiopia and why uh, the Rastafari is able to be recognized as, you know, such a, you know, the son of um, Solomon and all of that. Then you got Dedan, which would be Sudan, you know, and then notice it says Cush begot Nimrod, not Canaan begot Nimrod. But then you start getting into what we call the families. And it's going to tell you about a certain group of families. Right. Right. It says right here, if you look at it closely, it's going to tell you the families of the Canaanites were dispersed. Then they're going to go into the story about the tower. The pyramid, right? Where now the whole earth had one language and one speech, and it came to pass that they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. Then they said to one another, Come, let us make bricks and bake them thoroughly, that they had brick for stone, and they had asphalt for mortar. And they said, Come, let us be make, uh, let us build ourselves a city and a tower whose tops in heaven. Let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be scattered abroad over the face of the earth. So the subject is not disobedience as being told by our conqueror, but it's, it's about being scattered abroad, which is a diaspora. It's the definition of diaspora. Abroad means specifically overseas or in and out of a foreign country, right? So we're talking about a people being scattered abroad. So who do you know 
are the descendants of people scattered abroad, right? You got the, well, we just went the sons of Ham, right? We have the sons of Joseph, and we have the sons of Shem. And Joseph is occupying the tents of Shem, and we, the, 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 the people of the Hamites, are all being subject to being their servant and their servant as it is being defined uh, in in the details of this story, right? So if we go here and you look at the, uh, come on, man, uh, Genesis 9, and you talking about Noah and who did he curse because he was drunk. He found, they found this, you know, this is all a little story here where Noah um, got drunk in his vineyard. And you notice they, they're they going to definitely point out Ham, the father of Canaan, because they're setting up Canaan, right? Right. And, but, um, and he saw the nakedness of his father and told his two brothers. Notice that he just saw it. That's the problem. He didn't make fun of it. He didn't ridicule it. He didn't touch him or nothing. That's how they demonize him. It just said he saw because nakedness ever since Adam and Eve has always been the problem, right? Nakedness is really, it means ignorance, right? They call it nakedness, but they he seen the ignorance of his father. All right, so, but Shem and Joseph took a garment, laid it on both of their shoulders and went backwards and covered the nakedness of their father. Their faces were turned away and they did not see their father's nakedness. So they're making it clear that nakedness, naked, nakedness is the, the, the issue here. Just like the story of Adam and Eve. And Noah awoke, awoke, came conscious from his wine, like Eve, and went and knew what his younger son had done and, and uh, to him. Then he said, curse be Canaan. Not him. Right. They just want you to know. Now, Ham was the father of also Cush, Mizraim, and also who else? Uh, Cush, Mizraim, Put, and Canaan. All right. But they they, they let you know in the story, Ham. But it's going to be assumed that you know that everybody else is involved, too. A servant of servants he shall be to his brother. He's being cursed in the servitude. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Shem. And may Canaan be his servant. Shem, right? The native man. May God enlarge Joseph, who has been enlarged from the result of the enslavement and the dispersing of these people, of the of these people, the African people, all right? It's, this has been enlarged. The West, not even the East, the West. West of what? The, this, this region here, West. All right, so um, anyway, um, we, um, we just, just establishing that the Canaan, everything linked to Cain, right? is being demonized everything from from cain right cain had lamont proved to me that do you not we're not talking about the first human beings lamont had two wives a dazilla right and then what he tells his wives he says listen to my speech wives of lamont for i have killed a man for wounding me and a young man for hurting me so what he's saying specifically is that he killed two different men, if you have any questions about that. One of them is a man who just wounded me. Well, I say, well, if you wounded me, okay, you can justify him killing him. You you, you just poke, you just, you know, cut me up or whatever. All right. But he says, even a young man for hurting me. So for less of damage and a young man, we're talking about two different people. So we're not talking about, you know, and so we can't be talking about Cain because he would have been the only one walking on the planet, right? But no, obviously, uh, we're not talking about that. It says Cain went out from the presence of the Lord because this Lord is simply a master, a landlord, a person having authority, sovereign, that we're giving the credit of God. They heard him walking, talking, not just walking, talking, but walking, talking in the cool of the day. Like a master, a master doesn't come out. There we see the nakedness, getting back on the subject of naked. Naked simply means ignorant as soon as they got the information their eyes were open like the serpent had said the serpent being the symbol of wisdom that was blown off the sphinx just like we just we already established um in so many different ways so the serpent has been demonized the serpent doesn't is not called anything other than cunning in the story cunning um having a showing skill of achieving one's ends by deceit or evasion this is obviously a translation that is new, because if you was to go to the King James, it used to be subtil, which is an obsolete poetic word, right? I used to think it was subtle. But 
these words have been changed and altered even within their own translations so to create help create the character so that you don't have to really do too much thinking of your own but if you do the thinking you would say hold on well did he lie no the serpent said to the woman you will not surely die for god knows in a day you eat of it your eyes will be open and you will be like god knowing good and evil so these three th these three things here you you will not die in the day you eat of it your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. And that's actually a, tr a mistranslation too, because if you go to the King James and you look at the same verse, it says, the serpent said to the woman, you shall not surely die, for God doeth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened and you shall be as gods. See, plural, in the King James, knowing good and evil. So they flipped that off rip making it from God's meaning that's why they have us in there you know what I mean in the capital letter because those who have the knowledge of balance both the negative the good the shade and the shine both degrees to basically give reference to each other right you're balanced you're not ignorant or innocent you see what I'm saying so the eyes of both of them were open so right when things happen you can manifest your yeah. own reality right. and your own thought. So the woman, when the woman saw the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes, the Bible writer is telling you there's nothing wrong with her eyes. She was able to see the tree was good and it was pleasant to the eyes. They're using the eyes twice to let you know this is not about her being able to see. And the tree was desirable to make one wise. Like Christ said, be as wise as a serpent and as harmless as a dove. She took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband who was with her. She didn't go back in and seduce him. Right. And he did eat. And as the serpent said, the eyes of both for them were open and they now knew that they were naked. Now they knew that they were ignorant. They knew they were innocent. They knew they were naked. They now applied the knowledge and they sewed fig leaves, not apples together and made themselves covering. So we know that the apples come from the ancient Greeks tradition of proposing, right? The ancient Greeks proposed to their darlings. Um, by throwing an apple at their chosen wife, if the woman caught the apple, she accepted the marriage proposal. All right, and this the origins of this west, wedding custom, like most Greek traditions, can be found in Greek mythology, meaning it is no longer true. All right, so people are still practicing and believing in Greek mythology because the only reference to a fruit in this story is to a fig. All right, and in which um, is native to really the Mesopotamian area because these is this is really where that this this Bible origins is most likely coming out of. All right, so uh based off of the references in Genesis two, where Genesis two, where you know they're traveling and they're they're describing that they're entering into the land of Cush, right? They're telling you, well here in the Old Testament they actually used Ethiopia. I mean, when the, you know, not you know, what I'm saying the, the original King James, but you know, they're talking about in the onyx, go, onyx, you know, in the gold of that land is good. There's bedillium, onyx stone. The name of the second river is Gahoom, you know, and then this, this, that, the same as that of the the uh, that uh, encompasses the whole land of e Ethiopia, right? Right. They're even telling you Assyria, right? Assyria is a country. Um, that was um, from the early part of the second millennium BC. Assyria was a center of a succession of of kingdoms, of empires. So, you know, we know they're coming up through here, you know, up through here, boom, and down and around the natural land bridge, in which is the story allegory of Moses, who divided this. This is the area. The reason why pyramids are here, so that if you was traveling from here or here or here or here, and you wanted to know where that land bridge was to get out of Africa or in and out of Africa, you can see the pyramids in the distance. And you say, oh, they, hey, there we go. We on the right way. Let's go right up. You see what I'm saying? It gives people a sense of direction, right? It, it was an epicenter. It was letting people know that this is the way out of Africa because it's surrounded by water. And this is where God divided the seas. You see what I'm saying? Into the land of Canaan. All right, so that's the reason why this is all a big, big topic of the Bible. This is where it's all taking place. So Genesis 11, uh, 
in the finishing of the tower builders of the people of Africa. We just saying, if we're talking about these people here, where did they build the pyramids? <laughs> right here, right here. That's where they built the pyramids. This is the reason why I'm telling you that they're the pyramid builders who were taken as captive, the slaves like Hagar by the Hebrew, the early Hebrew that we already said that they conquered it in the, in the second century in the early millennium before Christ, right? They conquered it from the uh, these original inhabitants, which were obviously African based off of the natural geographics of the earth. Obviously, these people were taken out of the land and dispersed all throughout history. Now, these people, the Khazarians, as you can see, converted to Judaism in 300th century in the early, uh, early parts of Anno Domini. Right. So they converged. They converted to Christianity. At, I mean, uh, Judaism at around the same time, more or less, that this region, the West, converted to Christianity the, through the Roman, the Roman uh, Catholics and the, the, uh, the other side of the bird wing converted to Judaism. I mean, uh, excuse me, Islam from Persia, from like Iran all the way down and throughout. So the two sides of the bird, the right, the left. You notice the crosses on the right and the moon and the star. This would be the sun as well in the, in the, in the allegory because of Christ manifested personifying the sun. Mm -hmm. So the sun and the moon. So when you see these, these two references in the revelations, you know what they're talking about. All right. But these, this all happened, as you can see, the Khazarian kingdom from 300th century, 300th century, right? It's not the ones originally from the second 2,000 years before Christ. Now, these are the same subjects of the World War II who were taken by Hitler for, you know, I'm sure, you know, there, you know, there's a significant reason why, because this, these, these, all of these people were in warring together. This is a coming, the reason why they converted to religion in the first place is because you're talking about the Goths, the Huns, you're talking about the Spartans, you're talking about the Romans, you're talking about Genghis Khan, you're talking about the Vikings, you're talking about, you're talking about people who was just really needing some religion, all right, needing some divine principles, <laughs> right? So, you know, they up here fighting and warring, look, look how, look, this the Huns, Hungary, right? You can tell, you can look at the Greeks, the Romans, right? The, the French, the Turks, they is up here rapaging, you know. Going crazy. You got the Brits up in here. You got the, the, uh, where, you know, all, I mean, it's all ref. It, so, this is the reason why the Moors went up in here and say, listen, man, we're going to put some education centers up in here. We're going to educate because it was going crazy. They were starving out here. They had plagues going on here. What the heck was going on over here? Because it was condensed. People were spreading disease and all kinds of stuff like crazy. And it's cold, right? So it was hard to grow crops year round and all kinds of stuff. This is where all the spices and the minerals and the trading up and down the Nile and the Red Sea. So this is the reason why this land was wanted. Whoever controls this controls the world. It ain't had nothing to do with religion. It has nothing to do with controlling the traffic coming through the Mediterranean Sea, the traffic coming in from the Red Sea. Get taxes from all of that. Mm -hmm. Get traffic from all this traffic coming up down here. We want peace of that. All this traffic. As a matter of fact, we're going to stop this. We cut this here, cut Africa off. Now it's completely surrounded by water, right? The people can't just walk over no more, right? So right now we got Libya. They they killed Gaddafi, who turned Libya, which is basically put into the one of the most successful regions of the continent of Africa. And now it is what? The epicenter of slavery. Oh, yeah, they yeah, slay yeah. selling brothers for $400. You want you a Negro? Go get you a brother from Libya for 400 bucks. All right? Current day. Right now, 2018. It ain't not this ain't nothing. This is the put. This is Miserium. This is Kush, right? This is the Canaanite. All these people, right? They kicking pe they paying brothers right now. They paying you. They say we'll give you a, a a plane ticket and you know a little bit of money to start off with. You get up out of Israel. They trying to get rid of the original people, the man of the dust. This guy here, with like you was just saying, the, oh no, no, those my cheekbones. That's what Sylvia over here. These my cheekbones. Look at me. Look at him. Look at him. Right? <laughs> this my nose. This why you blow it off for? If it was yours, you wouldn't have blown it off. 
right? Why is his head shaped like the cobra, the serpent, right? What did Jesus say about that? People, people, you know, want to go about Jesus. Jesus said, I'm not even going to have to do it. Be wise as serpents. Why would he say be wise as a serpent in Matthew 10, 16, right? Because it's harmless as dove. Because he said, or let's just do it. He he said it because he's sending you out among as sheep, unprotected, domesticated creatures among wolves. So be wise. This is what I was just telling my, my boys. Be wise, right? What is this? Did it say 10? Matthews 10, 6. Lost sheep. Right? They're telling you, you're domesticated. Your horns has been taken. Your melanin is being, is going, and eventually they're going to turn you into a sheep. They're going to take away the melanin. So this is the reason why we see over time, the melanin is being reduced, 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 reduced. Right? Where is that? What was that? Was it 16? Yeah. Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be you, ye, therefore wise as serpents, as harmless as doves. So Christ, obviously, he was taken from uh, and he, he studied in Egypt. Right? He, he His whole, his youth took place in Egypt, right? It says, out of Egypt I call my son. That's because of the Akhenaten, right? Out of Egypt, right? Arise, take the young child and his mother and flee into Egypt. So they departed into Egypt. How long was he in Egypt? Don't ask that question. Because <laughs> it's going to blow the myth. Let's go ahead and do it right now. So he was in Egypt. Until the king Harold died. He heard the, the uh, king Harold died. Right? He took the young man into his mother and came into the land of Israel. This is after they, they heard. It says, he was there until the death of Harold. Let's up, look up Harold real quick. Search for Harold. We're going to learn that Harold died, what? Four century B.C. He wasn't alive around the story of Christ. He never even went back. <laughs> he couldn't go back. That's a fact. You see, I just went from went from the story straight to Harold the Great. I you couldn't you can't make that up. All right. All I did was search, put search, search Harold, and it said it tells you it says search for Harold. Go to Harold. Harold the Great is going to come up and he's going to tell you that he died four cent fourth century B.C. before Christ. So. The numbers don't add up, but that's not the moral story. We're just we're establishing that we're talking about slaves, and not uh, and not um, and those who are being taken. The true people who were taken out of that land were African people, and it's, this is all about being setting up or cursing these people, taking off. They're covering up the history of the African people so that they can take. The history themselves and justify their own occupying of that and i can bring that home real close uh real quick i forgot where i was going here um now keep in mind uh there's one thing that i do want to uh mention here that that tells you that christ was um a student in africa is when he was being tempted when the tempter came and you notice that every time it says the devil took him up to the holy city, wrong, and set on him on the pinnacle of the temple. These are all man-made things, okay? All right? And the temple, the holy city, where's that? We went to Vatican, all right? And said unto him, if thou be the son of God, cast thou self down, for it is written. Where's it written, people? He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, which is true. And in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest aught at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. Jesus said unto him, it is written again. Right? 
that thou shall not tempt the Lord thy God, right? So it was he. Where is he getting it? It is written where they, they both understand. They're both students of the scriptures of some scriptures. Christ is, and he is right. We know that Christ was a student where he studied, where his youth was when he was in Af Egypt, Africa. All right. So again, the devil said, "Taketh him." The devil. We well. I'm not going to let you you be your own judge. Mountain and suit and showed them the kingdoms of the world. So he went to a mountain, to a high place, right? And showed them the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. And said unto them, him, all these things I will give you if thou will fall down and worship me. And Jesus said unto him, get thee hence. Get up out of here, saying, for it is written. So this means what? That Christ was not willing to get on his knees in, uh, in front of no man. He said, get up out of here. <laughs> get out of me. I'm not getting in front of you. All right, all right. But anyway, don't be bowing down to nobody. That's an act of slavery. All right. So anyway, he, sa he says, um, for it is written. Again, that's the reason why I'm saying it. Three times we're going to do it. It is written. This means he is a student. He is not coming up out of his own imagination it's as if he's the God and he's creating this. He's saying, I am a student. It is written that thou shall worship the Lord thy God and him only shall thy serve. Who said that? That's Christ. In the first three things he's talking about. He's saying that the, you, he said, you shall worship the Lord God. And him only shall you serve. This is Christ saying that in the beginning, right? And anybody trying to make you believe anything other is this what he calling? It says, then the devil leaveth him and behold, angels came and minister him, right? But I, I thought it was three times. It was three things he said. That was all, all he said, it was written. It was written, it was written. And even what the devil was saying, it was written. He said it written again, so he must have said it before here. Um, maybe it was because uh, uh, he told him to turn the bread, the stone in the bread, right? So then the tempter came. He said, "If you the son, be the son of God, command these stones to be made bread." But he answered and said, "It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God." So what he's saying is, is that no book alone is God, but God is living and it perceive it can be out of, you know, you can be speaking the truth. God is the truth. So whoever's in the moment of speaking the spirit of truth, they're speaking on behalf of God, right? So it means don't feed off of one source, feed not on bread alone, right? But, but off of multiple sources, all right? So all I said of all of that, you know, just established that Christ was being educated in Africa. And the, the allegory of King King Harold is also flawed because it is not what uh, it is not um, accurate. Because if you look, it says here in Revelations that there will be what? I know the works and tribulations and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of those who say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. And it'll, it'll tell you that they mislead, misled the people into believing right here. It says, but I have few things against thee because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Baal, Balaam, who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel. To eat things sacrificed unto idols, pigs and stuff, and to commit form fornication, uh, fornication. So, meaning that you know we're just out here wild and having, set, you know, listen to our music is all about you know just wilding out and not being really thinking about the procession of life and the lineage and the ancestors and really what the meaning of life is. So they just out here wilding. So. You know, they they they're saying that they're being given a false doctrine to distract them from the real so that they can then hijack it. And then if you believe that was a, a coincidence, it's it always confirms it. All right. It says it again. Who is he talking about? Right. Who is talking? Right. Is that he says I'm the alpha. Right. 
It says here, it says, um, I know thy works, the angel of the church, these are things saying, he that is holy, he that is true, he that is the key of David, he that opens and no man shuts, and shutteth and no man open. I know the works, behold, I have set before thee an, an open door and no man can shut it. All right. But behold, I will make them the, of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. All right. Because you have kept my words of my patience. Right. But anyway, the point I'm trying to make is, is that the revelation is telling you that there is a people who are posing as Jews and are not the original ones. All right. They and. That already backed up. And so at the to wrap it all up, it's telling you here in the last book of Revelations, right, that the tree of life, right, which bore 12 fruits, right, and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations, right? So the, the leaves of the tree of life were for the healing of the nations. What are the, he, the, the leaves of the tree of life are the remnants of, that they etched on the on all the like here. Here's a leaflet of the tree of life. Here's a leaflet of the tree of life. Here's a leaflet of the tree of life. The symbol of life. These is what gives us the evidence that we can piece together the remnants of our past. That's what we're doing here, right? Piecing together. The remnant, and that shall be a healing to our nation. Why? And there shall no be thyself. no more curse. You see what I'm saying? It's all about a curse. The tree of life. Is it a coincidence, Rondell? No. It says, right? Who? I, Jesus, right? The Alpha, the Omega, beginning, the beginning, the end, the first and the last, the Genesis, the revelations, the secrets in there. Right. It says, blessed are those that do his commandments that may have a right to the tree of life. The tree of life is a right. Its leaves are for the healing of his nation so that there shall be no more curse. So what that means is, is that the person who is keeping you from the tree of life is what? He's walking in the garden in the cool of the day. They hid themselves from the presence. Right. He had to say, where are you? Right. They heard the voice. So the, they heard his voice. Right. He was afraid. He was afraid because he was naked. Are you naked? You, you afraid because you were naked from your God? No. God, the real God is in your, the knowledge within yourself activated. He hid himself. Right. So you're not saying that this God is a man. Right. Right. So then it says, because you've done this curse more than all the cattle, and more than every beast of the field. This means that you're going to be what? The cattle is what? A remnant, animal, horn, cloven feet, domesticated for meat and milk. Or as beast of the burden. We're going to be cursed just like that, right? Just like that. So if you look at the people, they're being hoarded like cattle to be doing what? The beast of the burden, right? Right? And it says, if you want to get confused, you're not sure about that. Is that not true? It says, and more than every beast of the field. So we already talked about the cattle, the sheep, the gold, the oxen. These things are domesticated creatures formed the beast of the field, not the wild. They're not talking about the baboon, the hyena. They're not talking about the giraffe. They're not talking about these things because they're not in this area. They're not referencing these things. The serpent, the cobra is demonized. They don't see that it means the wisdom of the earth. The, the walks on water, right, that goes underwater, what goes up trees. It can take a lion down or it can take a, a bearer down. It, it is an apex predator. It is wise. It is subtle. It is quiet. And it doesn't have hands or wings. All right. So it is it is they take all of that and they put it on top of. Right. If you take it and you say if you go to the chief deity, Ra, right? Ra, God. Let's just put that right. And if you look at an image above the chief deity, 
right? You're going to see Ra. The reason why he's the falcon head is because the falcon has the high perspective over the earth, right? The higher, the, the eye that sees all, right? So above it is the sun, and surround the sun, you will see the serpent. The, the rod, and the serpent and rod together, that's the magic of healing, right? The magic of medicine. That's the reason why they have, that's the symbol of medicine now to this day. But this is the curse that we just went, that said there shall be no more curse, right? Right? There shall be no more curse when you access the tree of life. Right. So we're talking about the you are cursed. This is Revela This is Genesis three, the beginning. All right. It says on the belly, you shall go. Just in case you didn't think he was talking about a man being cursed more than the cattle and more than the beasts of the field. If you need more conversate confirmation on your belly, you shall go right through the middle passage. On your belly. Where did you how did you get here? Hey, this way. Not everybody, but the ones that are cursed into servitude that's coming from these regions see on your belly you shall go from these regions remember abram hagar from here she was a bond slave okay right so they telling you they didn't they ain't hiding from you that the egyptians were slaves and on your belly you shall go right here go the moors they went they went here they go to mali right look up the mali revolt right the mali revolt Right? They were the ones taught by the Moors, right? Mali Revolt. Look at the Mali. You spell it M A L I Revolt. You're going to get these brothers. Right? Let's look at this. Look at the images right now. You get these brothers. You change this I because of Portuguese translation, and you get these brothers. Now look at these brothers. The Mali Revolt is perhaps the most significant slave rebellion in Brazil on, this, on, on a Sunday during Ramadan in January 1835 in the city of Salvador da Bahia, da, uh, da Bahia. A small group of black slaves and freedmen. Who are those freedmen? The Moors. Right? How you know? It was on Ramadan. What do you want me to get you? What do you, what do you want me? Inspired by Muslim teachers. The Moors. The rise up against the government. This is Salvador. This is facts. Where they come from? Mali. <laughs> Why? Because it's geographical location. If you look at his geographical location, right? If you, the king's over here, who you gonna conquer? These people here. Take these, man. You ain't gonna take your own. You're gonna take these on behalf. These are the ones that showed the Spanish over here in the first place. Again, these people did not know that this part of the earth existed. And as soon as the Moors introduced them, to this world, look what they did. They made it their garden. And they enslaved these people. So that they can come over here. All in this region, they're getting the timber. Timber. Right? Look at look at Belize, right? What you gonna see when you look at Belize? Look at this map. Look at this uh picture. See these brothers? This used to be two brothers. They got a light skin here to represent the indigenous man, because that's actually his land. But these were two brothers in the original flag. Two brothers. What they got here? Saws, axes, axes, whatever this used. This is used to. Look, look you see the ship? The ship, the produce, back over to Europe to enlarge Josephat. That's the curse, and that's the reality. Ship it back over here. Bring our slaves here. Ship it back over here. It's not going here. It's not going here. This is the sugar. This is the cotton. This is the cocaine. This is the uh, coffee. This is the uh, cotton and the livestock, and the corn. All to feed these people over here because they didn't have. Look, look at this. Where they gonna grow their crop? They got all these people over here fighting over food. So they use this as a garden. And this is this their land? No, they rule it from a district, district of Colombia, 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 right? And it goes back, Christopher Columbus. What was he doing? He wrote the Book of Prophecies, right? Your man, Christopher Columbus, the Italian, the Roman explorer, navigator, colonialist, who completed four voyages across the Atlantic, right? He led the European expeditions to the Caribbean. Anyway, he believed that Christianity must be spread throughout the world, right? That the Garden of Eden must be what? Found. Look up the word found, meaning established or originate. 
He is the originator. He's the founder of the Garden of Eden. So if I ever say that, Christopher Columbus is the founder of the Garden of Eden. Now, look at word found, the definition. It says, especially by providing an endowment, right? An endowment. Well, who was the endowment? The last world emperor must be chosen. Columbus had chosen, at least in his mind, that the Catholic monarchs, Fernandet, Fernandet and Isabella, would fulfill this position due to the vast imperial power and religious conviction that the Spanish monarchs claimed. So that is the union that brought him to him, them, to get them to come over here and finance the trip over here. And then eventually these people here got involved too. All right. So that's, and that, how do you find that link? That link is simple. Uh, that link is right here. Uh, right here. The last crusade must take back the Holy Land from the Muslims and that when Christ comes, he will come back in the place he lived and died, Jerusalem. Right. So this is the link between Jerusalem and the modern Jewish Jewish people. And this is the reason why we give so much money from the Americas there. It's like 10 percent of what we produce or something. I don't know what it is, but money is going to Jerusalem. All right. So. Uh, today I, I I wrapped up that you know these nations these were talking about healing the nations the tree of life um, I I actually broke down how it is a curse it says on the desk you uh, on your belly you should go I already showed you that and the desk you shall eat chitlins pig feet the pig period you know beast that has just been burnt okay all the days of your life I will put enmity between you and the woman so this is how you know. Then now we talk talking about uh, snakes, right? The state of feeling or being actively opposed or hostile to someone. This is the reason why we have so much hard hardship in our families, in the black families, and you can't have a community without a families, right? A group of families. So if eighty something percent of your children are being raised by uh, what is it, seventy eight percent, seventy eight percent is headed by a single mom, the children living in poverty. That is part of the reason. It's the enmity. And they're going to show you how, right now, how that enmity is being put. Let's see. Between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. So the next story, Cain and Abel kill it. You know, the boys kill each other, right? Because this in person, this individual is going to put enmity between these two boys. It says between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. See this curse? He shall bruise your head. So he going to control your head. Right. He's going to rule over you. He's going to have you psychologically stressed out trying to rule over you. Right. He's going to take away your power, your ability and you shall bruise his heel. So that means you're going to be the drama queen. You're going to create all the th devices where keep him from being able to be his true strength is too strong. Strength. Imagine LeBron James without uh, uh, with a bruised heel. He wouldn't be worth his millions. He wouldn't be able to dunk. He wouldn't be as powerful or influential. All right. So it's way of making the people paralyzed by putting enmity between the household. That means they can't build outside. If you can see part of the, the deception is here where they put to the woman, he said, he was actually talking to the woman here. He shall bruise your head and you should bruise his heel. This is where they, but they put it here so they can keep the narrative that they're cursing a snake and not an actual human being. This doesn't even really need to be there. This is the narration. But then it continues and say, I will greatly multiply your sorrows and your conception. The way you perceive things and the way you bring life into the earth, right? Conception has two meaning. Two, it's a double entendre, okay? Meaning to conceive a child, and also the um, the way you perceive things, something uh, in which the way you perceive or regard. So you perceive life as a pain and sorrow. Mm -mm, I ain't having no kids. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Instead of receiving it, this is my continuation, my uh, eternal life. Uh, a, a perpetual procession of life, my lineage moving onward, right? The way you perceive childbirth. And so it says, in pain, you shall bring forth children to confirm that what I'm saying is true, that you are now perceiving in pain and desire, your desire should be for your husband, right? And you, sh he shall rule over you. So now, you know, he talks about to Cain, it says, curses the ground for your sake and toil, you should eat of it. So the curse is, is, is in the beginning, Curse, curse, this guy is cussing him out, right? Right? And so at the end of it, this is how I conclude, okay? It says, 
the tree of life. It says he confirmed that the serpent's last statement was true, that the men, they didn't die. Adam lived, uh, Adam lived um, 907, look, it says, so all the days that Adam lived were 930 years. He didn't die in the day, okay? He had children who had children who had multiple wives and everything, all right? So anyway, uh, as you can see here, the, the, the enmity is placed right here between the two brothers where it says, um, Abel, Cain, Cain was a tiller of the ground, which means that he did hard work. He does the labor. Again, Cain being cursed to till ground, but no longer is going to be yielding fruit for you. It's going to be yielding fruit for... See, this is the curse, right? You see what I'm saying? It, he cursing Cain to be a till, uh, to work on behalf of others. When you till the ground, it shall no longer yield its strength to you. So that's slaves. So that proves that this, this is all about the making of slaves, slavery, not a, the descendants of slaves, not a descendants of the first people, because he, he went out and he may had a whole family. You know what I'm saying? Like they said, the city of Nod, right? He had a son, Enoch, but this son was mixed breed. He made it with a native woman. And that's what, that's what this is about. And, and Enoch born in Rod, and Rod bought, begot Mujel, Mujel begot Mushushel, Mushel begot Lamak. So these people was all they was all able to find wives. Lamont took for himself two wives. They made it clear that that was possible. Two wives is possible. And this is before Seth. See, Adam hadn't had Seth yet. He had Seth at 100, 100, 125 years, I think, something like that. So 125 years went by the genealogy of Adam. Remember I just showed y'all created all of that stuff was not a coincidence. Same thing, created using three things with Vern. That that wasn't a coincidence, but it says um, Adam lived 130 years and begot a son, and named him Seth. All right, so it was they saying all of this happened right here, and uh, the family of Cain. All of this happened in 130 years because that's between Seth wasn't born yet. Seth is born here, so all of this happened in 130 years. So. And then after this, the world was so corrupted, Noah had to come and build the, um, the you know what I'm saying? I mean, where's where's all these people coming from? So, you know, Noah came and now the earth is flooded because it, 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 the, everybody is, this is just seven, six and seven. You see what I'm saying? So it's not about the first human beings. It's about the first slaves. At the end of the story of the tower builders, right? They had united the diaspora, scattered abroad. That's us. The slaves were scattered abroad. But the Lord came down. The who? People say God. No. The master, the ruler, the leader, the sovereign, the superior, came down and see the city and the tower which the sons of men had built. Sons of men as opposed to sons of Jacob. The native people of the planet. And the Lord, the master said, indeed, the people are one and they have one language. And this is what they begin to do. Now, nothing that they propose to do will be withheld from them. That's the problem in the story, people. This is the conflict. One language. They became one unity. And this is what they begin to do. Now, nothing that they propose to do will be withheld from them. Come. Let us go down and there confuse their language. Let us, this is allegiance. This ain't God doing it, you know, them building disobedient, disobedient, Nimrod, I'm going I'm to be great, I'm going to be great. I'm going to build the, with the, the Khalifa or whatever. No, I, this is not building a tower. This is building a pyramid in alignment with the heavens, right? With the heavens. But their objective was let us build a city. Because around the pyramids are cities. The, the, the pyramid is just the epicenter. And, it's, and that's, that's all over the planet where you go. If you was to go to Belize, you'll see the, 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 the pyramids there. It's an epicenter. It looked like they played sports there. They had maybe swap meets there. They, they was able to go to the top and see that the weather was coming. Or they was about to be attacked by over here. They was able to see the forecast. So it was a lot of reasons why... The king, the king may want a tower up in the heavens, but it ain't nothing wrong to, to build a tower. It ain't that high. All right. So 
The problem is not that. The problem was unity. The people are one. Indeed, I confirm the people are one and they all have one language. And this is what they begin to do. Now, nothing that they propose to do be withheld from them. So when I was over there talking today, Sophia, and I was saying, what's the central ingredient for wealth? It's unity. All our problems are solved. I know a way where you can multiply your money. You want to multiply your money? Yes. All right. Well, you multiply your money. You put 25, you get 400 out. What you need to do is sell this product to two people that will do the same. Oh, that sounds like a pyramid scheme. <laughs> oh, 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 yeah, that's how you... Okay, go back to change your, your, trading your, your time, your dollars for hours. How much are they giving you for a whole hour? So I'm, I'm getting I'm getting 15. No, you're not. Because you, get, uh, you, gotta, you take an hour to get ready. You take an hour to come home. Do they pay you for that? No. So take that 15 divided by 10, not 8. <laughs> then, then you got to buy your own clothes. You got to pay your own electricity. Everything just to get there to pay what? Your landlord. <laughs> You're still the same way. And if you can't take no time off on your own without asking your boss, you still a slave. Because if you can't say, you know what, this year, I think I'm just going to... Live and do what I want to do for one year. If you can't do that without losing everything in your life, if you can't even do it a month without losing everything in your life, yeah, you, the system is working. So it says, come let us go down there and confuse their language, right? So where do is the language confused? My brothers down here speak Portuguese. Up in here, they speak Spanish. Here, they speak English. Here, they speak English. Here, they speak English. Here, they speak Spanish. Here, they speak French. See the saying? We divide it. We can't even unite. And then the continent, we don't even want to talk about that. All right. But anyway, the division of language is the problem. And this is the reason why uh, they are trying to unite, reunite. And they might not understand it. We, so, that, so that they may not understand another speech. Same, same people that's keeping them people from the tree of life. So the Lord scattered them abroad of, from there and over the face of the earth and they cease building the city. So this is not a story about, therefore the name is called Babel because there the Lord confused the languages of, of all the earth and from there the Lord scattered them abroad over the face of all the earth. Abroad means overseas, right? Overseas, right? In foreign countries, scattered diaspora, diaspora, diaspora. So the whole story is about scattered. But we are being taught is about rebe re rebellions, right? Where do you see rebellions in there? Nowhere. And I asked the pastor when he said, oh, I need other I need other stories. I need other. No, 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 no. I showed you my proof. Why can you can't just show me your proof? It's simple. Show me simple proof. Scattered, scattered, scattered. Scattered, scattered, scattered. What's the conflict? The conflict was what? The people, indeed, yes, the people are one and have one language. And this is what they begun to do. Now, nothing that they propose to do would be withheld from them. So come let us go down there and confuse their language. That's sabotaged. That's the people. That's the Tulsa, Oklahoma. Right? Right? The first attack in America on the wealthiest black community in America. Right? Why? Because it began because a 19-year-old young man, right, was accused of assaulting Sarah Page, the 17-year-old young daughter, right? I'm a young elevator operator in the Drexel building, right? Right? So they, so, so the African-American men, they just rushed down to the police station where the young suspect was being held to prevent a lynching. And a white crowd had gathered. And a confrontation, a confrontation began between the black and white people. Shots of fire, 12 people were killed, 10 white and 2 black. Oh, heck no. Nah. Right. They don't win. They ain't winning this one. So they had a throw. They throw a fit. You know what I'm saying? It says they, uh, and so, the, and the news of the death spread throughout the city. Mob violence exploded. Thousands of people rampaged through the black community in the night. That night, the next day, killing men and women, burning loot in stores. 10,000 black people were left homeless, property damage over more than 1.5 million in real estate at that time, and which is now 31 million in 2018. It says that black people said that 
uh, policeman had joined the mob. Others said the National Guardsmen fired in the, with machine guns on the black community and dropped p- drop, uh, sticks of dynamites from the plane. The f- first air, air attacked on American soil was a race riot. They get their precedence from the Bible, people. All of this stuff is racism. It's about the body. It's all, it's, and I'm not saying it's all bad. I mean, I believe there's certain powers and truth, but it's a curse, right? Should should he deal with our? Should he deal with our sister as an harlot, right? This is the, the incident where Jacob's the sons of Jacob went in Humar's uh, the 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 native land, right? And Humar was so in love, or Shishim was so in love with this woman. He ached for her. He offered all his land and anything that he would he could get. His dad, he had his dad go get this woman for marriage. His dad offered his people, kingdom, come be part of us. They say we can't do it unless you get circumcised, buddy. Sorry about that. So they said, fine, we'll do it. They went and cut themselves to blood sacrifice. They cut themselves to become one of the people, right? Then what happened? Right? It came to pass on the third day when they were sore that the two sons of Jacob's Simeon and Levi, Dina's brother, took each uh, took uh, took each man his sword and came upon the city boldly and slew all the males. See, they ain't interested in the men. Remember, that's why Adam had only men, because the women they just they go out and populate with the women. Okay, they take they acquire the women, right? They want our women. All right, so and it comes on the third. All right, so and they slew. Uh, they slew Humar and Shisham, his son, with the edge of the sword and took Dina out of Shisham out and went out. The sons of Jacob came upon the slain and spoiled the city because it had they had defiled his sister. And it just defiled his sister. They will they will lie and tell you that it, he raped her. No, no. They said Shisham was more honorable than all of the father's household. Who are they? Who are the they? That's Pastors, right. people in the church. The foul, Dina, the foul was, is racism, not rape. Okay, and I'll prove it right here in front of you, other than the fact that they're mentioning, they made it note to let you know that he was more honorable than all the household of his father, that he offered all the dowry that he could. But it says here that um, it is something that you ought not to be done in Israel. See? Here it is, right here. It's something you should know better of. All right, so, and the sons of Jacob came out of the field and heard the man aggrieved they, because he had wrought, wrought fully in Israel in lying with Jacob's daughter, wrongfully, wrought fully in Israel in lying with Jacob's daughter, which thing ought not to be done. So it means that you are not supposed to be sleeping with the women of Israel. Jacob is the personification of Israel. Okay. So uh, let's see if they'll even say that if we even look it up. Yep. Jacob in the Bible, Hebrew patriarch, the younger of the twin sons of Isaac. Twin sons of Isaac? And Rebekah, who persu- persuaded his brother Isaiah to sell him his birthright. And tricked him out of his father's blessing. All right, Jacob's twelve sons became the founders of the twelve tribes of the ancient Israel. Right, but anyway, so we we see that this is a representation of, like they said, the twelve tribes of Israel, uh, in from a certain perspective. All right, so anyway, so this is a person representing the tribes of Israel. Okay, all right, and you're not supposed to be sleeping with a daughter. The sons of Israel, see the sons of Jacob, see how they just said that? Sons of Jacob, right? The son, the daughters of Jacob means the women, right? And you're not, it, you, it's this thing you should not I'd be done. I'd be done. This is the reason why um, even Abram, this is established not with them, with them but with Abram, uh, Abraham um, making his slave go to Mesopotamia. And I know I got to end this at some point, but I really I really did want to mention, bring that up. But uh, you see the nature and the dynamics. They're going to demonize the African perspective, even though they're telling you right here in the stories that they dealt deceitfully, right? Um, here it is right here. And the sons of Jacob answered Shishim and Himar, his father, deceitfully, right? They tricked him. And this is a common thing 
all of, all throughout all these stories they stole off before this look they stole off with laban's uh laban's women his daughters his laban said i would have sent you off with my daughters and my wife i mean why'd you just steal off they didn't even understand and um uh um anyway yeah see how they steal they they lying i don't know but anyway it's just the way they 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 do it. I wish I they had the titles here. But what I was trying to do here real quick is to prove that Abram was from Mesopotamia. So this is when Abram um started to uh looking for and we'll close it up here. See how this stuff really goes along. Abram faith confirmed. Isaac is born. Abraham Isaac, all right. So he had to go find Isaac a wife. So, um, no, Abraham can't be there. A bride for Isaac. Okay, so we'll close it here. So we know, and because this proves that it's all about slavery too. So uh, remember the servant, the slave, took his master's camel. He's talking about Abraham. Abraham, beware, you do not take my son back there. The Lord God of him, it took me from my father's house. Um, and from there, okay, so he didn't want his son to go back to his land of his kindred. All right, so here it says, um, he, he do not take a water. So God, it says, um, and this is the reason why we're not supposed to be swearing. Please put your hand under my thigh and I will make you swear by the Lord, the God of heaven and the God of earth. We're supposed to be not being able to do that, making a deal and under the God. But this is the power that the Jewish people use is that even in the Bible, they're using the, the, the God to sell their position. In, the, in that geographic region of the world. So using God is a very powerful. I say God to called me to do this, to say this to me, your brain all, 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 it takes it in a whole nother level. All right, so we as slaves ain't allowed to use these practices that's being established here. So he made his what? His servant, he took his oldest servant of his house who ruled over all that he had. So like Adam was able to rule all over, he can eat above everything, but don't take knowledge. All right, oil of the tree of life, please put your hand under my thigh and make you swear by the Lord, the God of heaven and the God of earth. Under that, my thigh? That, you're between my thigh. It's a contract. We're making a contract, a deal. That you will not take my wife from, uh, that you will not take a wife from my son, from my daughters of the Canaanites. So this is racism. He had migrated. He had migrated to these people's land, right? He migrated to the people's land. From Mesopotamia, and this is where we're about to prove here as we close it out. From Mesopotamia, he migrated here and systematically decided to not integrate with the people, become one with the people, right? But he made him swear not to take for his son a daughter of the Canaanites, among whom I dwell. But go you sh again. but you shall go to my country to my family and take a wife for my son Isaac. So he's telling you, don't, where he's, they here, up through Syria, Assyria, down through here. He's saying, go back to my homeland. Don't take my son though. You're pointing to Mesopotamia. This is Mesopotamia. This is where they are now in Canaan, okay. the land of Canaanites. This is how Israel becomes Israel. All right. So, all right. So we're establishing that he's now telling the slave, to go back, it says, so it says, but you shall go to my country and to my my family and take a wife for my son Isaac. So the servant said to him, perhaps the woman will not be willing to follow me to this land. And this is where you're going to practice, practice jewelry, where he gives the woman at the well jewelry. And she then gets overwhelmed by the goat. And she goes and takes him to her father's tent and, and deal with her brother, right? When they just stop finished saying it, don't deal with our our daughters like a harlot, right? But this is what they do. Anyway, all right, so um, he makes them go. So it tells you now, it's going to tell us where he went. So the servant said, all right, so behold that you do not take my son back there. He said, must I take your, make your, uh, must I take your son back to the land from which you came? And Abram said, beware that you do not take my son back there. Don't go. The Lord God of heaven, who took me from my father's house and from the, la the land of my family and who spoke to me 
and swore to me, saying, to your descendants, I give this land. See, he's taking the land. And he said, my God, this is a personal individual thing that making a decision, but that we're buying into and we're believing into. We, he will send his angels before you and he shall take, uh, you shall take a wife from there. And the woman, if the woman is not willing to follow then, then you will be released from your oath. Uh, this oath only do not take my son back there. So he's saying, if you go back and you can't find it, then, you know, that's fine. You, you will be released from this oath. You'll be fine. But do not take whatever you do. Do not bring a woman back from Palestine, please. OK, I mean, from yeah, the canines. All right. Don't be trying. To, don't don't feel like you're going to get scared. OK, don't feel like you're going to get in trouble. So the servant put his hand under the thigh of Abram, his master, <laughs> his Lord. You see what I'm saying? We've been doing that all day and swore to him concerning his, this matter. So um, Abram began, took his wife. And then here he goes and says. Come on, Rondo, where we go? Where does it say that? So he, no, okay, so Abram again took a wife. Hold on, maybe I, I did that wrong. All right, I don't know how I did that. All right, but anyway, I, um, so it says, uh, this is not really the only part I'm really trying to make a point here. Here he goes. So mm -hmm. then the servant took, Ten of his master's camels and departed, and for all his master's goods were in his hand. And he arose and went to Mesopotamia to the city of Nahor. Nahor was his brother, Noah's brother. I mean, uh, Ab uh, Abram's brother. So the city of Nahor. He already has Ham's blessing now. You see that it's not Abram; it's Abraham. He went to Mesopotamia, and he made his camels outside, and and then he ended up finding a woman. He used jewelry. I just told you. How to how he did that? Um, there's the gold right here. I just seen it. He took golden nose rings, right? Rain a half of shackles, money, gold diggers, right? And then she end up sending him, and they end up dealing there. And he, this is human trafficking. She end up going that same day, immediately back. And now you see the jewelry, right? Jewelry. All of these things set precedence for what we see going on. That's the reason why you see rappers. When you look at me, look at my jewelry, look at my jewelry. It's all a trap. It's all a trap. You know, not to be disrespectful to anyone or anything, but I prove a lot of different things that the Bible has a lot of reality in it. It's about black people. It's about a curse on us, and um, and it's being used. This is just Genesis. Exodus is actually the tumbling of our our greatest creation, which is Egypt. And, you know, we taking the side of, of Moses. Moses, that whole thing is just a, it's just a, a allegory talking about the exodus out of this land breach. If you notice, the whole continent of Africa is surrounded by water, right? And this is the only way out by foot. This is the division that God made in between the two oceans, the Great Sea. And we call it now Mediterranean Sea and the Red Sea, but it was just once the Great Sea. And this is where, this is how you, only way you get out through Canaan. This is the reason why, you know, this is such a uh, coveted thing here on the earth. All right. So we proved a lot of things. We proved that the garden of God in the garden is walking, talking. He comes out in the, the cool of the day and his ultimate desire is to keep man, Adam. Who was his slave from and let's not just make it up the man has become like one of us to know good and evil and now least he put out his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever least meaning to prevent with the intentions of preventing something undesirable to avoid or risk of so this individual in the garden was trying to prevent Adam from putting out his hand. Adam being a slave to till the land for this individual, right? To take also the tree of life and eat and live forever. Live forever is the eternal procession of life. That's another translation of word that's translated in various different translations. Depends, I'm sure, if we go to 
the old King James, and we look at the same thing. It's probably, oh, okay, it is forever. Live forever. Ever is the lineage. You know, you know, my grandfather, I have my grand, my, my father, my father have my son, me, me, me have my sons, my sons have my grandkids, my grand. And when I pass, I know that that lineage is going to continue to reproduce itself. That's the tree of life, right? And uh, therefore, the Lord sent him forth from the Garden of Eden to do what? To till the ground from where he was taken, from whence he was taken, from where he was taken. Ground means the solid surface upon the earth, the land, solid surface of the earth, to till the land from which he was taken. The Bible has never been deceptive. It is how people are teaching the Bible. Everything is right there. This God in the garden, is it your God? No. It is the God of the people who are making you a slave. It never said that these are the first human beings on the planet. He never even had a, a female child, right? Because they're not interested in the female. They, they mate with the females. They go out and conquer. You conquer women, right? Right? So the the point is, is that this is about, look, the earth from which opened his mouth to receive his brother's blood. It's about blood sacrifice. It's the communion right now. You open your mouth to receive wine in tradition of Genesis 4, but Christ had to come and stop you from actually drinking blood and actually say, okay, I'm going to turn the water into wine, unlike Moses turned the water into blood. Jesus came and he turned to water into wine and then turned wine into symbolism of blood. Right? Right? So when you till the ground, you shall henceforth yield unto her strength. It shall not henceforth yield unto her strength. A fugitive and a vagabond, a runaway slave you're going to be. This is all in the beginning. Genesis. And you cannot say, the pastor told me, that, oh, Jesus wiped it all out. Jesus covered it with his blood. No, you're covering it with the blood. You're using it as a distraction. Because Jesus said that the tree of life, right? The alpha and omega, the beginning, the end, the first and the last, were for the healing of the nation so that there shall be no more curse. So we need to understand what it is in order to solve it. Because it is a right, says the alpha and omega. All right. What that says, the last word of the Bible, Amun. Amun Ra. Right. The true. All right. And to conclude, know thyself. Know thyself, Sophia. Heal the nation and apply divine principle. To know thyself. The kingdom of heaven is within you, and whoever shall know himself shall find it. Let us eat. <laughs>